What is going on everybody? This is Keebs and we are back for another Langrisser Mobile Hero Guide. And in this video we're going to be placing the spotlight on Joshua. So Joshua is an interesting hero. He, as far as his classes go, he has this Black Fang class which is a demon assassin class, sort of in the same vein as Farrakia's um, Wraith Queen. And then you have his Shadow class which is his basic assassin class. And while Joshua is an assassin, he isn't a tr an assassin in the traditional sense, where he doesn't have access to a skill like Plunder, Shadow Raid, or Riposte to allow him to attack an enemy and ignore the guard of the tank. And while that might seem like a downside at first, it's actually not really that big of a deal for him because Joshua doesn't have... doesn't place a threat on the enemy in the same way that those heroes do because instead of using single target attacks Joshua is more of an AoE based hero so let's go ahead and take a look at his talent here and then after I finish talking about the talent I'll sort of go into a little bit of an introduction on why Joshua is so powerful so first let's talk about his talent here so the first part of his talent just gives an increase to his crit chance. So depending on your star level, it'll be 10, 13, 16, or 20% increase to crit. And this directly plays into the second part of his talent, where after dealing a critical hit, you're going to deal some fixed damage that scales with your attack. And this is going to go all, all the way up to two times at six stars. So just on first glance, his talent here seems like it probably... For those of you who have Egbert are probably going to be thinking, well that seems like just an inferior version of Egbert's talent because Joshua has to deal a critical hit to do his fixed damage while Egbert just gets his guaranteed. And you'd be right, that is true that his is easier, Egbert's is easier to use the talent for the fixed damage. However, Joshua has the benefit of his talent activating on enemy fades because when Joshua takes a hit, he's able to still deal the fixed damage from his talent as long as he deals a critical hit, whereas Egbert only does fixed damage when he's the one actively dealing the damage. So there's a slight very slight difference between the two, but I think it's worth taking note that, you know, there there's a difference because they're not exactly the same hero. And on top of this, Joshua is a physical based AoE hero, and that's why Joshua is so powerful. So to give you an exam an idea of why Joshua is so powerful because of he him being a physical based AoE he uh, hero, you have to kind of consider what it's like when you're trying to kill an enemy using magical based AoE. <clears throat> when you're using magical based AoE, if you're trying to kill mages who are high priority targets when you're playing PvP because they are able to hit physical attackers on their weakest stat mages do magic aoe and if you're trying to kill another mage with magic aoe you're hitting them on their magic defense stat and for most mages if you look at their magic defense here Livni has an s for magic defense lana has an s for magic defense your healers tiaris and liana both have an s for magic defense <coughs> and even the srs and um just regular R's have A's for magic defense so they all have really good magic defense and the reason that Joshua is so good is because he is able to still provide a threat to enemy mages but he's able to provide a threat to all enemy mages because he does AoE and <clears throat> why is this so good well Joshua does physical damage and since he does physical, he hits them on their weaker of the two of their defensive stats. He gets extra bonus damage here when he uses Phantom Raid and Magic Eye because it, they both do increased damage against mages. And then on top of that, mages tend to be fairly fragile when it comes to their HP because they don't have all that much, that, that very large of an HP pool. So... <clears throat> Josh was able to hit the weaker of the defensive stats, do extra damage with Phantom Raid and Magic Eye, deal critical hits, which do extra damage, 
The critical hits also activate his talent, which do more fixed damage in there. And then they have a low HP pool. So there's a pretty good chance that in some cases, if you're fighting some someone who, you know, isn't prepared, he could possibly kill an enemy mage with one hit because of all the different ways that he's able to boost his damage. And that's why Joshua is so good. So before we continue talking about Joshua, um, at least why he's, he's so good, um, we're going to go ahead and talk about his classes real quick. So Joshua's classes here, you have Ninja, Shadow, Executor, and Black Fang. If you're using Joshua still in the early stages and you don't have any runes to spend on him, you can pretty much make him 100% usable just by going down this Shadow line because Shadow gets him his Dark Demise skill, which is a really short cooldown skill. <coughs> and then you also pick up Phantom Raid, which is his ultimate skill. So just going down the Shadow class, you can pretty much pick up everything you need for PvP and PvE content. And then once you find some more runes, you can go ahead and pick up these two classes. It's not absolutely necessary that you pick up these classes, but if you are using him for PvP, which most people are, you're definitely going to want to spend the extra two runes here. Uh, if you're not using him for PvP, and you're mostly using him for PvE, you can go ahead and go down Shadow and then just spend one rune to pick up Ninjutsu, because this, t this passive skill is really good. So, I th I really think that you can get by with Joshua without spending too many runes on him. Although, of course, any hero that you plan to use seriously, you're probably going to want to spend the extra runes to unlock their other classes. And since he only has two class paths, it's not really that big of an investment. So, that's pretty much it as far as his classes go. Let's go ahead and get into talking about his pass or his skills so i'm gonna start with the one point skills because they're fairly simple to talk about double tap this skill is honestly not very good it does one times damage has a 40 percent chance to deal two times uh, deal two attacks so 40 percent chance to do two times damage which 60 percent of the time you're not going to be able to do that and since joshua doesn't really run into too many situations in PvP where he's going to be needing double tap, well, you can go ahead and just throw this skill out because 60% of the time this thing's going to be a normal attack for you. And in those situations, you'd probably be <coughs> better off using one of these two passive skills for the one point skill because sneak will increase your chances of doing a critical hit and it'll decrease your damage taken if you end up attacking a mage for, uh, with single target however the problem with this skill is <coughs> since Joshua doesn't have any skill that's able to ignore an enemy guard most of the time when you're using him at least in PvP content whoever you're attacking is going to have someone to tank for him uh, to tank for them and because of that you're probably going to be attacking either a juggler or a landius and Sneak will give you a little bit of protection against Landius, but you probably shouldn't be doing single target attacking against the Landius with your Joshua. So when you are attacking an enemy that doesn't have a counter attack on you like Juggler, well, you don't need the damage reduction from Sneak. So this skill's not all that great for you. So in most cases, you'd probably be better off using Ninjutsu because... <clears throat> Especially when we get into Apex Arena, where there's actually maps with terrain to deal with, Ninjutsu is going to be invaluable towards uh, to you, and being able to treat all terrain as planes is always good. And on top of that, when you're on top of defensive terrain, it's also going to increase your attack value. So, <clears throat> Ninjutsu, best one-point skill for Joshua. Moving on to his two-point skills, we're going to talk about Ruthless. Uh, the for Ruthless, I really can't recommend this skill. The main issue with this skill isn't that it, it's not bad. It's just that because it's a two-point passive, you end up having to use this skill and deciding between if you want to use Ruthless instead of one of Joshua's other AoE skills. And if you're using <coughs> Ruthless instead of an AoE, 
you're basically gambling on only being able to use one AoE for the whole match. And if you're doing that for PvP, that's a pretty big gamble. I would probably I wouldn't recommend that. I'd be I'd personally recommend going with using an extra AoE skill. So there's nothing wrong with this skill in terms of what it does. The main issue with it is that well, as I already mentioned, Joshua just has such great AoE skills that it's hard to it's hard to throw one of them away for this skill. Uh, on to Joshua's faction buff. This skill, there's nothing really super special about it. It gives you all the basic faction buff stuff with the stats, and then it also increases your AoE damage, which is good, but you don't really need it for Joshua to function. And since Joshua belongs to some very powerful factions in Meteor Strike and <coughs> Princess Alliance, that faction buff for Heroes of Time is mostly going to be a PvP thing. And, well, it's a PvP thing. If you plan to use him as your faction leader, uh, you always have that option for you. So let's go ahead and move on to talking about his three attacking skills. And I'm going to start with Magic Eye first because this is the most basic of all of them. If you look at this, just the basic rundown of it, it has a three turn cooldown, three range, three span, 0.3 AoE damage. This is standard as far as AoE goes. If you look at something like Tornado or Acid Burns, they do the same thing. 3-3-3, 3 3 3, point three. three, three, three point three. So Joshua's <coughs> Magic Eye skill is just a standard AoE skill that has increased crit chance and deals one debuff, a random debuff, so you can't rely on it to deal the one that you want. And then it also does additional damage to mages. <coughs> so, <clears throat> not a terrible skill. Uh, it's just, he has two other skills here that are super good and it's, in most cases, I would probably prefer the other two skills at least when it comes to PvP. So let's move on to Phantom Raid. Phantom Raid is Joshua's ultimate skill. It's a five turn cooldown and similar to Heaven Sanction, the range is it starts from yourself and then there's a four block radius from yourself where this thing hits. And it has an increase of 30% to crit, a standard 0.3 AOE, and it deals extra damage to mages, which is really good. But what really sets this thing apart from other, you know, from, uh, what's it called? From Heaven Sanction, even though it has one less range in its span here, is that after you use it, you can move another three blocks. So essentially, if you use this thing in PvP, it's kind of like a no strings attached skill because you can move into the enemy territory, drop Phantom Raid, and then retreat back to your tank, and you'll... You have, you've lost nothing for doing that. So, <clears throat> extremely, extremely powerful skill. Highly recommend using this thing for PvP. Uh, if you're using Joshua for PvE, you can probably swap out Phantom Raid for Magic Eye because in PvE, you're, better, you're probably going to be better served by a short cooldown skill rather than Phantom Raid. <clears throat> now that said... Let's move on to talking about Joshua's final skill of Dark Demise. And this skill is probably my personal favorite skill that he has because, well, it there's a lot of reasons. First, it's a two-turn cooldown. So really short, you can use this thing fairly often. Every third turn, you can use it. It has a six-range reach, meaning you can hit a cavalry from right at the edge of its attack range, and all enemies within that range are going to also get hit. On top of that... This thing also has an increase to crit, so it's going to help with his uh, talent. It's going to do 0.35 times AoE. For reference, Dragon Breath, which is one of the strongest physical AoEs, does 0.36. And this thing is just a little bit weaker, but because you're likely going to get a crit, you're probably going to deal about as much, if not more, damage than anyone who would use Dragon's Breath. And then it dispels two buffs, and this is huge for PvP as well as in PvE, but mostly in PvP because being able to dispel two buffs is huge 
buffs are a huge part of PvP strategy and gaining an advantage in battle because if you run into something like Aluna or Vargas or Ledin or whatnot, you can dispel one of their critical buffs like Divine Guard or Unbreakable Guardian's Power Stab or the Two Range Guard or Wind Spiral or whatnot, or just dispel a defensive buff so that they're more vulnerable when you attack them. So Dark Demise is awesome. I highly recommend this skill. Uh, this, this thing is just amazing all around, and it's on a two-turn cooldown. So two turn cooldown for a huge damage AoE. There's there's not too much more that needs to be said. So amazing skills for Joshua. His AoEs, you can't really go wrong. You can mix and match whichever you need. And then your passive or your one point skill, the best one is probably gonna be Ninjutsu in most cases. So that's it for skills. So let's go ahead and move on to talking about his soldiers real quick. There's not really too much to say here other than Mist Dancers are probably his best soldier because Joshua does a lot of AoEs. Mist Dancers are able to activate their debuff from his... Um, their skill here works with AoEs, so when you use a critical hit with any of his AoE skills, Mist Dancers are able to deal a random debuff to them, which is really good. And then you have Shinobi. You could use these things. Most of the time, Josh was not really going to be single target attacking stuff. There will be niche cases where you probably could use this for something in like PV, uh, PVE content. But most of the time, you probably won't need Shinobi. Bandits, always good. Just Josh was not really a single target hero, so you don't really need them. Firebrand snipers, kind of an inferior, inferior soldier option, sort of. Uh, to Shinobi because they both do fixed damage they do get increased attack they do have <coughs> um, class advantage over flyers which is a plus it's just that the increased crit here plays really well into Joshua's talent and then Dark Elf snipers are garbage for Joshua at least because well most enemies that Joshua hits are going to be below 100% HP because he has a bunch of AoEs. And I don't think it needs to be said why Cyclops and Guardian Infantry are garbage for him. Um, there is a case for them because they do make it so that he survives a little bit better if someone attacks him from close range. So I guess they're not entirely terrible for him it's just that miss dancers do more if you're going to be attacking with joshua with single target any of these are going to be better for you probably in most cases but yeah miss dancers is probably his best soldier <coughs> and i would probably rec upgrade these first and then if you want to upgrade more soldiers for more versatility then go upgrade one of the others afterwards now that said, let's go ahead and move on to the equipment and there's not too much for equipment for him because well Joshua's more of an AoE hero so for Joshua his best weapon even though he won't be engaging in really any kind of uh, single target combat with most in most cases Extreme Magic Bow is still going to be the best one if you have a spare that's not on one of your more high priority assassins like Zerida or Dehart, because it's going to give him the um, it's going to give him a little bit more versatility in terms of his ability to survive a hit from someone attacking for him from melee range, or in PVE being able to attack mages from close range or archers from close range. You have, uh, I don't know, it's just Extreme Magic Bow is such an amazing weapon that it's really recommended for pretty much anyone that can use it because of just, it eliminates one of the key flaws of, or key weaknesses of these ranged heroes and that's, that's awesome. If you don't have an Extreme Magic Bow, you could probably just choose between uh, Hydra's Bow, Uller's Bow, or Spirit Griever, they all kind of do something something that gives him some sort of utility that can definitely be used. Hydra's Bow gives the debuff of 
decreasing damage dealt, Spirit Griever makes it so that he's more likely to survive a single target attack against a mage that he's attacking. Uller's Bow lets you attack mages and whatnot from outside of their counterattack range. <coughs> and that's pretty much it. You could use Bathory as well. The fixed damage here is kind of low though. So... Uh, pretty much if you don't have an extreme magic bow, just pick any of these weapons. None of them will really be a terrible option. They all do something decent that's usable for you. And if you don't have any of them, just go ahead and pick up a Cincidea or a <coughs> Chris here because they give extra crit. So moving on to armor. Joshua's best armor is going to be Last Rites, just because Last Rites is amazing. If you don't have a spare Last Rites, I guess you could go with something like the Demon Lizard skin to give you an increased survivability because of the extra HP. And I don't really recommend Monkey King's Vest for Joshua. Uh, you could use it if you do have an Extreme Magic Bow, because he does have the quick the quick attack animation because he's an assassin so it could be useful it's just last rights is probably better for him in most cases just because of the fact that he doesn't really end up in too many cases where he's gonna be outside of the enemies outside of your tanks guard range and in a position where you're gonna get hit by someone with uh, <clears throat> with melee <coughs> so that's it for SSR armors when it comes to his SR armors I would go ahead and just pick the adventurer jacket because you can never have enough HP helmets probably King's Crown number one because this thing is just an amazing equipment being able to buff your allies and increase their damage dealt is awesome uh, this thing is used on so many heroes the reason that Jorm's eye isn't really great for Joshua is because most of the time he's going to be using AoE from outside of the range of the enemies so you're almost never going to be close enough for this thing to do anything for you <clears throat> if you have a, a Njord's feathered crown this could be used as well because most of the time he's going to be dropping some AoE on the enemy and dropping their health below his own and it gives a big amount of HP here and you're going to get that extra defense in a lot of cases when someone hits you. So really good. King's Crown number one. If you don't have a King's Crown, go ahead with the Njord's Feathered Crown. And if you don't have that, go ahead and just pick any other SSR arm helm that you have if you, if you have a spare one sitting around. Because any of them will do just fine. Because if you have an SR helm, you're going to be using Adventurer Hat. And it, it gives you the HP, which is always good. But you can go ahead and upgrade to pretty much any of the SSR helms. And it'll be just about as good as the Adventurer hat. Because they give better flat stats. So finally, when it comes down to his accessory for SSRs, it comes down to choosing between Overlord Badge, Slayer Emblem, and Judge Talisman. Between the three... Uh, Overlord Badge and Slayer's Emblem are going to be the better of the three, or the best of the three. Uh, the reason for Judge Talisman being low is because Joshua's not really going to be in too many situations where he's able to attack some kind of holy enemy in single target combat because he doesn't have a way to ignore guards. And since he doesn't have a way to ignore guards, most of the time if you're trying to attack somebody's healer, they're going to get guarded by the tank meaning you're not going to really be able to make use of this Judge Talisman. If it does work with AoEs, it might be another it might be something worth considering, but I'm not 100% sure on how this works. Slayer's Emblem is always good because there's a high chance that you're going to run into stuff with flyers in PvE and in PvP, so just all around this thing is great. Same thing with Overlord badge, having the immunities from this thing is never bad <clears throat> so again overlord badge this thing is amazing if any, this thing is used on so many different heroes 
Uh, it's just a great safety net to fall on if you have a bunch of these, which it's one of the rarest accessories, but if you have a bunch of them, this is a really good one. <coughs> so that's it as far as, um, what's it called? As far as his SSR accessories go, if you're using him for SRs, Assault Ring, best attacking accessory in the game for SRs. Uh, finally, we'll close with talking about his enchantments, and for Joshua's enchantments, the best enchantment is going to be Blazing Sun, because 25% increased crit damage, 7% increased crit. The only thing that would really compare with this is going to be magic, and it magic increases crit damage by... Or not crit damage. Magic increases skill damage, specifically AoEs, by 15% damage, which doesn't compare to the extra 7% crit and 25% crit damage. So, Blazing Sun, number one. If you don't have any Blazing Suns, which I don't know why you wouldn't have any Blazing Suns, this isn't, only, this isn't really an enchantment that's used on anyone other than Assassins. But if you don't have any Blazing Suns, I guess you could consider Clock, but... I think you can you can get by without clock on Joshua because you can probably go ahead and just spam Dark Demise and well <coughs> clock is always a clutch enchantment if you use it um, I suppose there's also an argument for Breeze because Breeze is always good but just for general use Blazing Sun is amazing um, clock and Breeze are clutch uh, enchantments so <coughs> general use blazing sun clutch cases breeze and clock although breeze is slightly less clutch for Joshua because there's not gonna be too many situations where you want to send your Joshua out five mobility and then drop an AoE on them and then place your Joshua in that situation other than if for example someone's trying to run away with their with their healer that's heavily wounded or something and place them out of your danger zone. But either way, Blazing Sun number one. So that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys found this one uh, informative or helpful in any way. And if there's anything that I missed, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to give an answer if you have any questions. If there's any hero that you guys want to see a guide from in the future from me, let me know. And if you have any disagreements with me, go ahead and let me know in the comments as well. I'll be happy to either defend my case or maybe even you can change my mind. So uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, bye bye. <laughs>